Hey everyone, thanks for coming back by the channel here. I know it's going to be a busy week this week, so I took an opportunity today to test a little more of something I've been working on for Sparrow Wi-Fi. Uh, Sparrow Wi-Fi, you may have recalled, or you may recall that in the past I've did numerous videos on. It's a graphical user interface. Um, can control hardware on a local machine to do Wi-Fi scans, Bluetooth scans. It even has a tie-in with AirCrack, you know, for when you want to pen test your own network and do deauths and capture keys and things like that. Again, on your own network. Uh, also has a ability to use the HackerF or the UberTooth and do almost kind of a scan slash overlay of access point activity. It's a pretty handy uh, application. And it was actually built in such a way that there's a complete Sparrow Wi-Fi agent with an API and such that would really kind of run on a Raspberry Pi, for example, and be on, oh, I don't know, a drone. And so the GUI would one for one connect uh, optionally to a remote agent. And I always thought that it would be really handy to control multiple agents or get information from a lot a lot of agents so say a lot of Raspberry Pi spread out and about okay just as an example so what you're seeing on the screen here is a, is a web-based interpretation of Sparrow Wi-Fi of the Sparrow Wi-Fi GUI but it can command and control multiple agents at the same time so you can tell one or more agents to scan for Wi-Fi, scan for Bluetooth, you know, all the results are coming back uh, to this central uh, web controller. Uh, you can tell individual endpoints to um, use the, the air crack based tools. And there's some, I've, I've done some work on uh, like the survey data um, that still needs some work, but I don't know. I think it's pretty dang cool. I've added some additional fixes just as of today uh, prior to this video. So goal would be it gets pushed back into the main Sparrow Wi-Fi repository so that anybody can use it. And um, I've been doing a lot of testing recently because I'm pulling together uh, an updated Dragon OS Noble that uh, now I'm getting a little off topic, but has UHD 4.9 in it, and I've had I've rebuilt uh, GNU Radio and numerous applications that were compiled against that uh, older UHD version. So I kind of had to gut things out and redo it over. Anyways, that led me to um, more testing on this Sparrow Wi-Fi controller. So Sparrow Wi-Fi, uh, as it was described before, next-gen GUI-based Wi-Fi and Bluetooth analyzer. We are going to check out the controller piece of it okay refer to my other videos and you can kind of get a breakdown on just some of the other things that Sparrow Wi-Fi can do but uh, if you were if you were to get clone this repository down even on another PC that's perfectly fine doesn't even I mean if it was something else besides Dragon OS uh, goal is just to help out anybody but I'm trying to piece it all together so that it leverages numerous different components in Sparrow or uh, in Dragon OS so in the user source Sparrow Wi-Fi, when I um, ship DragonOS, it's where I usually stick these external applications. I'm going to have it uh, most up to date, or uh, as most up to date as it can be. And what you'll notice is there'll be a V and V there, a Python virtual environment. But uh, let's say we had to get that set up from the beginning. And because Sparrow Wi-Fi needs to run as a sudo or root, I'm just going to change the root. And if I was to do a Python 3-M VENV, say VENV, I would make this virtual environment uh, be present. And that's that's fine. And then I could source that VENV if I wanted. Notice I'm in the virtual environment. We can close this out right now. Notice I'm in the virtual environment now. We could uh, run, if, if you had to, I'm going to try and take care of a lot of all this, but you could, you, you notice the requirements text is right there. We could do a pip-r requirements. That way we are, oops, pip 
install requirements I've already taken care of a lot of this we would also want to go into the controller directory and also uh, pull in those requirements and we're gonna have two different windows open so in this first window window oh that's the other thing so I'm doing everything on one com on one computer both the uh, remote agent and the controller but you would be able to do this on um, like I said like I said Raspberry Pi connected on the network and the controller back on your main PC so just because of the hardware I had readily available I'm just doing it all on one computer right now but the, the same principles apply so we're gonna do a Python 3 again we're uh, we're, we're already elevated to uh, root and we're in a virtual environment here so if we do spare Wi-Fi agent I'm gonna just run it with the default settings there is a configuration file you can set uh, but I'm just gonna run it with the default settings we can see it's running on port 8020 there is a GPS D involved but I don't have a GPS hooked up and I don't have an uber tooth hooked up but I do have a hacker F hooked up which by the way uh, I'm in another window down here and we can see if we run hacker F info I've pointed this out in the past if you were to grab an old hacker F and plug it into the latest Dragon West Noble you'd want to make sure that you at least had your firmware version like 2024.02.1 or higher otherwise it's probably not going to work right so let's see we would want to uh, also we'll, we'll just elevate to uh, sudo here we're gonna go into our controller directory I'm just looking around I'm gonna remove uh, my previous dead uh, database so, so there is a database that's gonna be created that saves information that wasn't uh, really present before and uh, just a regular Sparrow Wi-Fi and let's see we can take a quick peek at the readme that is within the controller directory talks about proof of concept what it can do tells you how to run the controller we're gonna use this uh, unicorn or UV corn sorry and we're gonna start first we're gonna source ah, it's up a directory VNV bin activate we, we, we need to be in that per <laughs> Python virtual environment I'm gonna start that up it runs on port 8000 by default control C alright so we can see and I'll make it a little bigger I think it's worth just kinda of seeing what's going on in the background here uh, we get a we get a interface like this and we can add an agent I was testing this out earlier we could say dragon we'll do the URL as such because again it's all on the same machine if you wanted notes it's fine um, capabilities I'm probably gonna take that block out that's not really needed that comes from the agent and so we're gonna add an agent we add an agent uh, it comes up and is pulling pulling the information uh, from the one or more agents that are connected we can see the capabilities that is present on there whether or not it has a GPS fix I'm looking at this on the left we can get a kind of a, an interface breakdown on the right the interfaces that are available uh, yeah and so you can see more information about that node so once you have that uh, set up and, and working this right now is kind of like your one for one but you could have many agents connected here all at the same time you can pick uh, what type of just a quick scan like a not a air crack ng type scan so say for example you wanted to do a Wi-Fi scan uh, on the internal interface and you just want to do it like one time now mind you I'm gonna have to blank a lot of this out because we don't need to be seeing SSIDs and Mac but if we launch this you can see what's going on in the API and you get some results back quick scan too easy um, 
I guess while I'm here, the spectrum view, again, this needs a little bit of work, but this is the spectrum view for the Agent Dragon. Pops up a window. Um, well, I guess you could select the Agent there again. And so it's it's still not correct, like super correct as far as like the labeling left to right on the bottom, but we'll do a 2.4 gigahertz scan. And yeah, again, you can see the um, kind of the numbering mechanism for the channels is not 100% right, but that is doing the HackRF sweep on the remote agent and getting the data back. Uh, this will, you know, hopefully improve, so we'll stop the scan. You can see, uh, you know, scan stopped and started. We'll do the 5 gigahertz scan. You know, again, there's some of the channels there that need some work, but again, I think it's pretty cool telling the remote agent to scan and, and getting some info back so that'll improve so let's stop that and same thing if we were to do a Bluetooth scan we should be able to launch and we'll give it a second some of these things I'm gonna um, just kinda refine over time There we go. So I got I did another scan. I got some Bluetooth results back. We can see the different uh, scan uh, jobs that I've requested. Let me think. What else? Um, you can hide things, hide panels. I don't know. I thought that's pretty cool. You can turn on and off what is displayed on the map uh, when there's uh, GPS locations. You can hide uh, panels back click on it to, to get it back and then I don't know the, the really the cool thing here I think would be the currently kind of this plug in the Falcon panel and we can do this focus Falcon which will make the page a little bigger we can select either the uh, internal or the external I'm going to select the external dual band interface I'm going to put that in monitor mode. I'll give it a second. I can see WLAN01 is what the agent is reporting. So we did put the interface in monitor mode. We can start scan. And it'll scan and the page will refresh results once the agent provides some info back. We can see that there are some results back. These access points uh, and down below we got clients. There's no active deauth happening right now, uh, but let's see if I uh, was to select my own AP, and again, this is just for testing, and we wanted to check and see if we had protected frames or whatever else. That that's all. The only reason I'm showing this, if we uh, clicked this then we should get an indic uh, indication that there is a active uh, deauth happening and that that is kind of, that is repeated we can even see down at the bottom as far as the uh, active deauths what uh, ap is uh, you know what what it's what it's running against and the pid and stuff on that particular agent so we can have an easy way to click stop. There's a stop down there and there's actually a stop all the auths up top. I'm going to probably iron that out a little bit. And we can exit the Falcon Focus and come back and see our map interface. So, uh, what else? Really, I just <laughs> think that it's pretty cool to have this controller for Sparrow Wi Fi. So, probably add more to it. I guess also while I'm doing this video and I already have the hacker F plugged in I think it's worth noting too that I was experimenting and added back in uh, updated and add added back Q spectrum analyzer with PY QT 6 support so we can run it in the latest Dragon OS we get our all too familiar interface here we could go and uh, so far I've uh, checked out like so I, I have soapy power and let me think and RTL power I think in 
Dragonless Noble as well as Hacker of Sweep. I think I have to look at RX Power. It's one of those, but if we do our Hacker F Sweep or let's see, let's see, Soapy Power, we should be able to run this and give it a second and it'll process and we'll get some results back. So again, I was messing with it. It had averaging, smoothing, and persistence on. And it looks pretty accurate as far as what I'm seeing here. Uh, we can stop, we can go and change to hacker F sweep. Should change the default uh, start and stop frequency. And you know, it's a pretty wide, of course, sweep that's that's happening. And I think I wanted to say that that looks right. I had quite a, kind of questioned what was on um, in the about three to four gigahertz range, but it pulled up another spectrum analyzer and did see some activity. I don't really like look into what it is, but yeah, I mean, it looks like it's operating like it should be. And hopefully, you know, if anyone else looks at it, we can continue to improve this. So, all right. Those two things I wanted to show, I think it's going to be some pretty cool tools. Um, really excited about going into 2026 here soon. And you'll just continue to see improvements to Dragon OS. And as I have time, um, which hopefully I will have more of it, I would like to get some more videos together. So thanks for hanging in there. All right, have a good one.